Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. Now, I've just recently visited this place. No, it's not prison, although it does look a little bit like prison. Uh, this is actually uh, Birmingham Proof House, which is in fact open to the public. Now, not a lot of people know that, but it is. This is one of two proof houses here in the UK. Um, the other one's in London, and I believe the one in London is slightly smaller than this one in Birmingham. So. If you fancy uh, having a look at this place, um, check out the details down here in the video. Um, I'll throw in a link of how you can get on their website and uh, book to go and have a look at this place. I think they take a minimum party of uh, 10 people. Um, seriously, seriously worth a look. Um, I'm very lucky because I was able to go in there on my own and video and have pretty much unrestricted access. So. I've seen a lot of stuff that the public don't see when they go and visit. Um, also, I was able to visit. Uh, also, I was able to video, um, which pretty much no one's really allowed to do. And I've videoed some parts of this place that I don't think have ever been videoed before, and I've had full permission to do so. So pretty damn privileged uh, here at Rack and Load. We feel. So anyway guys, uh, this is going to be a two part video, um, I'm not going to waffle on too much, we'll jump straight into the footage in a second. Um, be a two part video because I've got that much footage, uh, I've got to do it in two parts. This first part will be um, British Proof Laboratory where they uh, basically test all the ammunition, um, you know, uh, manufacturer's ammunition, um, home loader's ammunition, service ammunition, every calibre you can think of. They test it here, okay? Um, they also, um, obviously Birmingham Proof House proofs every firearm or shotgun in the UK. So even if something comes in from America, um, it's gotta be proofed here before it can go on sale. And that is it, full stop. Um, anything leaving the country as well, it's gotta be proofed. Uh, so we'll either pass through this place or a uh, place in London. Um, but guys, it is a serious, seriously fascinating place. Um, I went in there at nine o'clock in the morning. I didn't come out until uh, nearly two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and I was in a bit of a rush, you know, trying to get as much footage as I could. Uh, if I'd studied everything, I'd, I'd need another day there at least. So like I said, check out the details of this video go and visit this place. Um, they do in fact want more visitors, um, so it's not sort of a bit of a hush hush, oh yeah we'll get you in or whatever. They really do want more visitors. Uh, obviously it's not free, you've got to pay to, to go and visit the place. Um, but if you're a shooter, a UK shooter, seriously, it is a real eye opener. <laughs> it is a serious eye opener. Anyway guys, Check this video out. Like I said, this is the British uh, Proofing Laboratory, British Proof Laboratory. This first video is all about ammunition and how they test it. Um, unfortunately, they weren't testing any firearms like you would imagine, you know, um, in like a concrete bunker, you know, a rifle or a, you know, a pistol or whatever. Um, unfortunately, they, unfortunately, the day I went on, um, they weren't they weren't proofing anything so to speak but they did do me a load of uh, test firing for video um although they didn't um although they weren't uh, firing firearms so to speak um it wouldn't really have made any difference anyway because i don't think i would have been able to film that anyway as they would have been private firearms and which is fair enough uh, but we did have a bit of a look at where they do that um, and like I said, we've got some uh, ammo testing footage as well. Anyway, I'm going to shut up, enjoy the video, and don't forget, check out part two. That will be the museum uh, part of the uh, part of this two-part video. Um, full tour of the, the uh, museum. Um, again, there was some stuff we weren't uh, able to video, so you'll have to excuse some of the funny camera, camera angles, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna shut up. Enjoy the video. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and we are at 
Birmingham Proof House. Uh, we've had full permission, excuse the noise, there's a train going over, we're actually under a bridge. Um, we've had uh, full permission to um, have a bit of a walk around here, a bit of a tour around the museum and behind the scenes to see exactly what goes on here. So uh, let's go inside and uh, have a look. Right, we're filming. So where are we now? This is the actual lab. This is the lab right. uh, that works for both the Birmingham and London proof house. Okay. All ammunition for both Birmingham and London is handmade here. Okay. These are, uh, are what we call the, the tests. You can imagine if we'd got a, a gun for every calibre that was made, how many guns we'd have. Right, yeah. What we have, we have a battle okay. calibred and then this is what we call a universal breach where the barrels are strapped in and the universal breech will take any calibre whether it be a rifle cartridge or whether it be pistol revolver cartridge. Right, okay. The um, cases <coughs> have to be drilled. Let's go on camera. Yeah. And the reason they have to be drilled for is because when they're placed in the breech and it's all locked up, that is sealed, would you believe, with sellotape. Right, okay. And then the pressure gauge is placed on top. Everybody vacates here because you cannot fire anything in here if yeah. there's anybody present. In this room, yeah. We yeah. all go into the, or, sorry, the, the lads go into the back room and they'll fire around. Okay. The pressure is then recorded electronically to the computer. Yeah. And that's where the pressures can be worked out. And as again, it, it's safety first. But again, this we can use battle after battle after battle. If you just look there, yeah, I noticed the barrels, right? And then a quick oh, little scan there. Wow! So that's pretty much every caliber, every caliber that exists, more or less. Yeah, it was damaged. And then, of course, wow. you've always throw a, a, a loud baller when you get an American wildcat in. Right. Okay. <laughs> and this is downrange, obviously. That's downrange. That is your chronographs in front of you. Right. We have got the old-fashioned sand butt at the bottom. Um, this get, used to be open air. Through there. This all used to be open air, but of course health and safety had to be enclosed and it had to be proofed. Yeah, yeah. And as I say, in here, um, you can scream and scream and scream, but nobody's going to hear you. <laughs> so these barrels more or less just fit in, screw into the end of that. Basically fit into there and to, to form a formidable weapon. Yeah. And then the breech is closed and then the pressure is taken. It's a transducer. A transducer? Yeah. So what, what exactly is that then? That takes the pressure, it measures the pressure. Oh, so that what goes on That's it, this, this thing here. Yeah. And then it all goes through and all done. All measured straight onto the computer. And these barrels are proper heavy, aren't they? They're, they're like a, the old fashioned bull barrel. Right. But, uh, Have you ever had one of those barrels fail? I don't know. No. 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 Okay. The Could case itself will fail before one of those does. Right, right. Because that's weaker, obviously. Well, what happened is, you know, we, we start to, we develop ammunition, so we start, we're always chasing pressure, we're always like producing more and more pressure. Right. And um, as you build the pressures up, and the case it starts to stretch and expand, and we watch out for that because you get to the point where the case, as a vessel, is not able to withhold the pressures that we sometimes we're trying to produce. Right, okay. Okay. And that'll give way well before the barrel does. Right. Yeah. where the transducer sits. Yeah, to measure the pressure, yeah. So if I, okay, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You can see inside there's a hole. You see the pressure face? Right, yeah. And inside there's a hole. Yeah. Well, that transducer will sit direct, directly above that hole. Okay, yeah, yeah. The transducer has to have um, be prepared properly. Yeah. It has to have ceiling rings put on the face of the transducer and also a heat shield. But ostensibly, that's how it's that's how it sits in position. Yeah, fact, if I... And then that's connected up to the, the computer right. then to give you all the readings. And then we we prepare the ammunition by drilling the ammunition. Yeah, I noticed that on the a case right. it just showed and me. Yeah. When, we, when we line the, the round up, we went off the round up to the chamber, that hole in the case has to line up with the hole Where that directly is. underneath the face of the trench. Yeah, center. yeah. Okay. Prior to doing all the sets up, of course, here we have to set up all the ballistic equipment. Okay. We have to know what we're firing, yeah. what transducer we're using. Yeah. We have to check on the sensitivity of the transducer. That has to be inputted. The projectile weight that we're shooting. Okay. Um, and all the background information. We do a check on the measurement chain. Yeah. To make sure the measurement chain is working properly. So we put a known pulse in. Right. And okay. we expect a specific answer back within a, a small tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. We make recordings of that as well. So at least to know, know that the equipment is working before we start using it. Yeah, yeah. We might fire two barrel warmers or functional tests first. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we also include those as being a reference test. So this will be known ammunition that we fired before, that we got results of, Yeah. that we put back through again and we check the new results with the old results to make yeah. sure that all the, the, the velocities and the pressures produced by the ammunition just fired falls within the previous test. Right, yeah. That's given a tick of approval, then we're, we're good to go. Carry on with your, your test. And then we get the right? ammunition from the conditioning cabinet. Right. We prep that and fire it. Wow. So there's lots of pre-checks before we actually yeah, start. Yeah. You don't just simply just put them together and fire it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, well to be honest, I did. <laughs> you, you, you're establishing levels of confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's amazing. Okay. All right. Brill. Thank you all, for that. All, all the tests we conduct are all electronically stored. Yeah. We also produce paper copies because obviously, if you're a customer, you might want a paper copy. You yeah. might have a computer, for instance. Yeah. So how do I get the results to you? Know, I send you a copy in the post. Right. Okay. So we have we keep hard copies as well. Right. Um, yeah. Brill. Again, sorry. So when the bullet exits the muzzle. Uh, you'll obviously travel towards the screens. The screens have already been lined up. Right. Uh, they've already been assessed in relation to their distance from the muzzle because the CIP state that we have to test 2.5 meters from the muzzle. Okay. And um, we've got equipment to allow us to do that. So we use a laser to assess the distance yeah, and yeah. adjust the screens to make sure they are 2.5 meters from the muzzle. And when I say 2.5 meters from the muzzle, I mean the mid base length. Right. Okay. As the bullet exits the muzzle, obviously it travels towards the screens and it goes to the first screen. The screen's got an ultraviolet emitters at the top. Right. So you get a, a, a blanket of ultraviolet light. You've got receptors at the bottom. Yeah. And when the bullet passes through that blanket of ultraviolet light, it will create a shadow. And the sensors at the pick that up, will then. pick it up. Right, got yeah. This is what you call the start screen because it starts a counter. Yeah. It passes that distance of half a meter. Again, that's been measured prior to firing to make sure there's no adjustments. Yeah, yeah. And it goes through a, an identical screen, but on this occasion it does exactly the same thing, but it stops the counter. So you've got a start screen yeah. and a stop screen. And over a measured distance that'll give you velocity. Okay. That's how that works. Real. Of course, that's all um, integrated into the the ballistic equipment. It's right. called Iris. It's the Integrated Range Instrumentation System. Okay. So not only does it test or measure velocity, it also measures pressure at the same time. Pressure and velocity. Okay. And from the velocity, you can get you can, you can work out the energy of a projectile or right. the momentum of a projectile. Right. Okay.
and then the bullet i thought the actual bullet went down range oh, well we, we can do what we like to do we like to catch our bullets into, into a, a bullet, bullet catcher or a snail trap the idea is the bullet will enter this enlarged orifice, yeah. and enter the uh, the body of the snail. It has a deflector plate which drives the bullet downwards, it takes all the energy out. Yeah, yeah. And then the bullet drops into this collection basket here. You salvage the lead then. <laughs> well, we don't actually, uh, and, and that's our old basket. That's our new basket. Oh, okay. Uh, that one's seen better days. So in the next few days, we're going to get the one out and push this one across. Right. There's a cutting fluid inside here. Can you see the white fluid? <coughs> That's a pump. And there's see the white fluid? Oh, yeah, yeah. The pump sucks the fluid around the snail and washes it out. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. It also reduces the amount of, I suppose, uh, erosion caused by the right. projectiles. And it also flushes all the debris out. So you imagine we we have to fire shotgun into these as well. And with so there's shotgun, a lot of rubbish going you, into Exactly, you've got yeah. the rubbish shot cards, the plastic drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the shot, and the shot when it hits the deflector plate, it will fragment. Yeah, it's a lot of lead dust. So all that gets washed through into the sump. Right. Brilliant. And then, and then of course we clean the sumps out on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or should do at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you very rarely now use the piss? Um, yeah, we can still use it, but very rarely we do so. Mm. Kistler high pressure generator equipment and what it's used for is to calibrate our working transducers. Okay. As I've told you earlier, our transducers measure the pressure 
produced by ammunition right. when the train ships were heading into a test barrel. Um, the rig mainly consists of the three items you've got there. If I open that up. You've got the uh, reference sensor. That's another transducer, but it's a reference sensor. Right. And what we do, we put our working transducer into there. Got you. And cable it on. And then by using this, we wind this in and we create pressure inside this cylinder. Oh, right, okay. There's an oil. You can see the oil level there. Right. We have to purge the system before we use it. There's certain procedures that we have to go through first yeah, before we yeah. actually use the equipment. But basically you just wind the handle and you increase the pressure inside yeah. that uh, tube. The reference sensor tells you the pressure that you've achieved inside that tube. Okay. And then the uh, working transducer will produce an electrical current right. in relation to that pressure. Yeah. And it's recorded. And what we have is I have a pressure plan. And the pressure plan goes from 6,000 bar down to 600 bar. Okay, long So go back to 6,000 bar, we set up for 6,000 bar, and we check the working transducer at 6,000 bar, and we repeat the loading at least three times right. to get three identical results. Okay. Um, and then we move on to the next pressure rate in 5,000 right. bar. Yeah. Um, and so on, and we, we record all the results, and all the results are transferred to an Excel spreadsheet where we look at sort of linearity and also hysteresis, which is basically how it's behaving. Right, blimey, okay, yeah. yeah. So it's quite an in depth yeah, procedure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And we do this on a monthly basis. And these are the uh, charge amplifiers that actually receive the electrical responses from the transducers. Right. And this is linked into the software on the laptop. Right. Which okay. allows us to carry out this process. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And you're talking probably just just like with it's probably getting off of forty thousand pounds worth of equipment. Blimey. Wow. All for public safety. Yeah. Yes. This is so that the British Proof Laboratory can determine uh, the wear and tear on, on its transducers that measure pressure. Right. Wow. <laughs> it's a proper science. Yeah, it's, it? it's, yeah, it's getting deeper and deeper all the time. Yeah. So I thought it's very important for me to show you that because it is fundamental to what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E.g. if I'm using a transducer that is erroneous, <clears throat> it's not giving me the correct results. Yeah. If I'm testing your ammunition and it's telling me I'm seeing 4,000 bar, when in fact 5,000 bar is being produced. Yeah. I could say to you, your ammunition is perfectly okay, you go away, you start using it, and you injure yourself with that. <coughs> yeah, excuse me, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and of course, it's, it's, it's all um, uh, calibrated to UCAS traceable standards, 17025 uh, uh, standards. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's, it's all. Well, we do our best to try and do it as right as we can. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely see that. <laughs> our, our, our governing body, the CIP, uh, wants all participating laboratories to have this 17025 standard. Right. Um, I think there's only one or two others at the moment within Europe that have got this 17025. Right. Uh, and there's a number of other proof houses. I'm not too sure whether there is a 15. Italy, Belgium, so, France, right. um, Russia, as one or two others, uh, Belgium. Um, and yes, we are intending on achieving the required standard. Yeah, and yeah. this is some of the equipment that we, we, are, we need to have around us to be able to, to do so, basically. Um, wow. Amazing, and this is bit of your ammunition storage. Yeah, this is this is the the major ammunition storage. Am I right to pan the camera around? You can pan it around if you right, want to. Right, yes. Yeah. Um, what you have here is a collection of different designations of calibre. Right. Not only metallic, e.g., rifle and pistol ammunition. Yeah. 
but also shock and ammunition as well. Okay. Blimey. Oh yeah, I can see some shotgun stuff over there, yeah. Yes. Blimey. And uh, this, this is it's a quite a big cabra range I have to make ammunition for. Yeah, yeah. And yes, you, and uh, of course, and the vast majority of its pressure test as well. This yeah. is where this equipment comes into to be. These are typical labels that I produce, which gives you the caliber, the quantity, the test reference number, the date of manufacture, and also the pressures produced. Oh, I see, right, yeah, yeah. So you've got all that data on your ammo that you're using? On the actual box itself, but right. downstairs we've got the actual background report. Right. The 10 or 20 shot test. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. The loading data, the loading data sheets. So I could go to, I could pick that out now and go downstairs and go look at my loading data sheet and, find and tell me exactly what I use to put inside that cartridge. Right. And also I could pick out the actual 20 shot test to go alongside that to show me the numbers that was being yeah, produced yeah, for that ammunition yeah. when it was fired. In test. Wow. I honestly thought, right, <laughs> it would be a matter of barrel, put some ammo through. It's it's not straightforward. It's not. It certainly isn't, and I bet a lot of people watching this. This is why I was questioning Dave. What do you want? I mean, I've got no idea what Dave wanted me, but it's difficult to pick exactly what you might really want. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, and we've only, we're, well, we're scratching more than just the surface, but we haven't gone too deep yet. I can go a lot deeper than this. <laughs> this is going to be a 24 hour video. Right. <laughs> no. Brilliant. Wow. A real eye opener. And this is all to do with the control of the manufacture and the testing of ammunition. Yeah. Ammunition that's made for the proofing purpose, e.g., anybody who brings guns in for proof. Yeah. The, the ammunition's fired to proof guns. Yeah. And then the other core roles I've got is, is the the, um, the testing of commercially available ammunition, right? Such as an Ely, Live Al Game, or shotgun ammunition, for yeah, instance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also home loaders ammunition, right? This all what to do with ammunition and the testing of ammunition, whether it be right. proof ammunition or what I call factual service ammunition. Yeah, yeah. We use the we try and use the same approach, of course. Wow, fascinating. Yeah, you, you could actually do, you could do um, a video just, just in, in the lab. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. You know, covering, and then you probably still, you know, if you if you did half an hour, twenty minutes, half an hour, you still wouldn't cover all right. all the issues. That's right. I mean, writers often said he says that um, the, the, if the, the writers didn't get it right, then everybody else is wasting their time. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't understand what he means by that because they're flying around. That's not a proof cash, for instance. So yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a barrel clamped in the vice, and then you go outside. Lanyards attached to the trigger. Yes. Yeah. Pull the pull the string, so to speak. Yeah. And then that takes the recoil. Yeah. If you go through the door, you can see there's another snail. That's just come right in there. Oh. That's the aperture of the snail. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Then, go in there. Oh, Okay, on the, the top here, you've got a, a 50 cal browning barrel. That oh, as we see, cracked all the way, all right. the way down. And we can see that. And then the end result, obviously, is there. So that's even with modern manufacturing techniques. Not without that torch, Blimey. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then on the on the punt gun, what you've got is a, a bit of a Heath Robinson. <laughs> model. Oh yeah. In that, had the operator fired it when that occurred, he would have been well and truly thrown out of the, the uh, punt. Yeah. And then we've got some 
interesting shotgun barrels. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've got uh, oh, that's agricultural it. use, crawling under fences, mud and snow in barrels. Oh, and that's caused that, yeah. And that's a wad blockage. And the end result oh, is there. That's another wad blockage. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And that's a bigger ouch. And that is a 20 ball. Drop down yep. the barrel of a 12, yeah. That would certainly make you jump, wouldn't it? <laughs> Give you pins and needles. Yeah, yeah. just a little bit. Just a little bit. Is that a pistol barrel there? That yeah. I've got some pistol barrels there. Okay, okay. alright. And then... Oh, blimey. Some serious failures gone on here. <laughs> None of them are doctored either. They're all They're genuine all failures. Gen genuine failures, yeah. Wow, I'm mm. climbing. What do you have to do? I was looking for the one that had been expertly repaired by, on the other by, side. A, by a farmer. With the uh, brazing and the That's the one. Uh, yes, yes. The soldered the yeah. pieces on. Whoops. And if you move around, yep. some more on the backs. And sometimes when I give the talk, you'd be surprised at the amount of home loaders that walked in the door that don't walk out as home loaders. Yeah, I must admit, it's something I don't do. It's just too fraught and bloody dangerous. Oh, this one's a good one. Barrel blockage. Now, every time the table, I'm going to try and ring uh, That's the best one yet, yeah, this one is. Yeah. That seriously would have That's right. done some damage to her. Now these are are these failures that people have actually done? Yeah. Not not failures that you've had here for proof. Yeah, no, that, oh, not not with that one. I mean, that's that's a home lo home loader's own own weapon. <coughs> God. People mess about with things they don't understand. Yeah. And you even get some home loaders. Um, they told me that they'll actually mix nitro powder with black powder. Right. Hmm. I can't believe that. It's that unreal. I'll get, I'll get you a barrel, another barrel to show you. Okay, uh, lovely. Um, this is fascinating guys, really fascinating. So this is a cut down of a barrel, and they've actually really fired that. So how did, how did that, that not blow to pieces? The charges weren't anywhere near strong enough. Again, home loads. So that is not, stacked not up with what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. 
There's ten bullets in the barrel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, eleven. Eleven, all right. Yeah, <laughs> what's one? And what's that? That what's that? That's a big caliber. Yeah, three fifty-seven. Uh, Forty-four magnum. Forty-four. And they've filled L the barrel up with. Lucky, luckily, there's a a good sized barrel. I cannot believe that. Let's have let's just have a look at it again. A Forty-four magnum barrel stacked up with bullets. Surely you'd know by about the, for a complete idiot, probably the second you'd be like, hmm, something's wrong here. There's no smoke coming out the end of the barrel. There's no hole in my target. Must have been more than a complete idiot. <sighs> Blimey. <laughs> Should you have had a license? Well, it makes you wonder. So this is a, a training device that's been engraved. With the proof marks. After the barrel's been fired, been proven, it's got the all clear. You'll go in for engraving or marking for the, with the proof marks. Uh, this is our engraver that we use. Okay. And as you can see there, we've got an example of previous, just practice proof marks. Okay. And yeah, uh, after get the uh, the barrel, as you know, barrels will come in all different sizes and shapes. And yeah, yeah. So we try and do our best that we can, mounting it correctly, getting it nice, even and flat. So it looks nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just basically uh, you measure it all out. So I've got a ruler to square it all off and then just type in all the correct details and away we go. And I'll give you an example of how, we, how it works. <laughs> Job we've got in, yeah. Tidy that looks, yeah. Real. Nice and simple. Okay then, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. We've just come out of the Birmingham Proof House. That was uh, pretty much a real eye opener. Um, if you're like me, I pretty much thought um, Proof House. I just thought, you know, it'll be a bit of a concrete bunker with a few guns in there where they just fired them into sand, and if they didn't blow up, they they stamped them. <laughs> slightly more in depth <laughs> just slightly but what a fascinating place guys seriously um you've got to come and look at this place uh, it is open to the public you have to book in advance i'll put some uh, details on how to do that in the bottom of the video i'll throw in a link uh, details of the video but seriously what a fascinating place i got here at what it was about nine o'clock this morning it's now uh, half past one in the afternoon um yeah all right i've seen some stuff that you guys probably won't be able to see and there was a lot of stuff in there that i weren't allowed to video uh which is fair enough you know there's military and police stuff uh in there as well so that, that's fair enough but uh wow i'm just blown away my i'm buzzing from the stuff that i have seen in there it's a real real fascinating place a lot of history as well and uh some of the stuff some of the failures where um, firearms are sort of blown to pieces and stuff is uh, pretty pretty scary so but anyway guys um, 
if you get a chance, you're near Birmingham, call them, email them, and come and have a visit at this place. Anyway, that's Rack and Load. Thanks for watching. See ya.